Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The rebellious love life of Henry VIII's younger sister, Mary Tudor. When we think of the Tudor dynasty, our minds are almost instantly cast upon the turbulent and brutal king, Henry VIII. His reign ripped a hole in the country and started the religious reformation, turning Catholics and the newly founded Protestants against each other in a way that would last through not only his time on the throne, but for generations to come. But Henry was never meant to be king. He was in fact only made king through the premature death of his older brother, Arthur. Something that would send the country and the line of succession into a completely different path. Henry, along with his brother, also had two sisters. An older sister called Margaret and a younger called Mary. Mary initially did the king's bidding and married a man who she was told but after the death of her first husband and acting upon a promise of her brother, Mary then married for love, but she would never guess the uproar that it would bring her way. In the late 1514, Mary Tudor was sent to France to marry the elderly King Louis. The French court was ahead of its time and French fashion was becoming something of a trendsetter. Mary was spoilt by her husband and she is believed to have carried out her duties as wife to the French king and a princess of England to a high standard. She's thought to have made her husband very happy as he is noted as saying that he could sufficiently praise and express his delight in her. But this marriage didn't actually last long. For almost three months in, on the 1st of January 1515, King Louis XII died at the age of 52 from a terrible case of gout. As was the custom after a king's death, Mary was then required to stay in France for around six weeks, away from all men to ensure that she was not pregnant with the king's child and heir. Mary was kept at the Palace de Cluny until it was deemed that she was in fact not pregnant. Now then, the newly appointed Duke of Suffolk, Charles Brandon, was then sent to France so that he could escort Mary back to England. But Charles and Mary had a history in a sense. She loved him and he her and she never actually wanted to marry the French king. But being the sister of the English king, Mary had to abide by the wishes of Henry VIII. Henry was aware that Mary did not want to marry King Louis and agreed to Mary's proposal that if her husband, the French king, died and she outlived him, then she would happily marry him if it meant that she could then remarry for love. Henry agreed to this, but did he actually mean it? Well, that's another story. It's thought he only agreed to get his sister to go to France and ensure his own agenda was fulfilled. Now it's interesting because we have copies of letters that were sent from Mary to her brother where she talks about her love for Charles and her brother's promise. Another interesting point is that Mary actually discussed her wishes to marry Charles with the new French king, Francis I, when he asked her if she had ever made a promise of marriage and she replied that she wished to marry the Duke of Suffolk and Francis is then believed to have encouraged this. The first letter in relation to her predicament is dated on February 15th, 1515, and is sent from Paris. Pleaseth it your grace, the French king, on Tuesday night last past, came to visit me, and had with me many diverse discoursing. Among them he demanded me whether I had ever made a promise of marriage in any place, assuring me upon his honour and upon the word of a prince that, in case I would be plain with him in that affair, that he would do for me therein to the best of his power, whether it were in his realm or out of the same, whereunto I answered that I would disclose unto him the secret of my heart in humility, as unto the prince of the world after your grace in whom I had most trust, and so declared unto him the good mind which for diverse considerations I bear my Lord of Suffolk, asking him not only to grant me his favour and consent thereunto, but also that he would of his own hand write unto your grace, and to pray you bear you like favour unto me, and be contented with the same, the which he granted me to do, and so hath done, according as shall appear unto your grace by his said letters. And, sir, I most humbly beseech you to take this answer which I have made unto the French king in good part, the which I did only to be discharged of the extreme pain and annoyance I was in, by reason of such suits as the French king made unto me not according with mine honour, the which he hath clearly left off. Also, sir, 
I feared greatly lest, in case that I had kept the matter from his knowledge, that he might not well have entreated my said Lord Suffolk, and the rather for have returned him to his former malfantasy and suits. Wherefore, sir, since it hath pleased the said king to desire and pray you of your favour and consent, I most humbly and heartily beseech you, that it may like your grace to bear your favour and consent to the same, and to advertise the said king by your writings of your own hand of your pleasure, and in that he hath acted upon mine opinion in his letters of request. It shall be to your great honour to content with all your counsel and with all the other nobles of the realm, and agreed thereto for your grace and for all the world, and therefore I eft soon require you, for all the love that it liked your grace to bear me, that you do not refuse, but grant me your favour, and consent it form before rehearsed, the which, if you shall deny me, I am well assured to lead a dissolute life as ever had creature, to which I well shall be mine end. Always praying your grace to have compassion of me, my most loving and sovereign lord and brother, whereunto I have entreated you, beseeching God always to preserve your most royal estate. I most humbly beseech your grace to consider, in case that you make difficulty to condescend to the promise as I wish, the French king will take new courage to renew his suits to me, assuring you that I had rather to be out of the world than it so should happen, and how he shall entreat my lord of Suffolk, God knoweth with many other inconveniences, which might ensure of the same, the which I pray our Lord that I may never have to live to see. By your loving sister and true servant, Mary, Queen of France. Now, although I am unsure of what Henry's reply was, Mary then sends him another letter, which replies that his response showed upset with both herself and Charles, whom she then married in 1515 in secret. Pleaseth it your grace to my greatest discomfort, sorrow and disconsolation, but lately I have been advertised of the great and high displeasure which your highness beareth unto me and my lord of Suffolk for the marriage between us. Sir, I will not in any wise deny that I have offended your grace, for the which I do put myself most humbly in your clemency and mercy. Nevertheless, to the intent that your highness should not think that I had simply, carnally, or of any sensual appetite done the same, I having no regard to fall in your grace's displeasure, I assure your grace that I had never done against your ordinance and consent, but by the reason of the great despair wherein I was put by the two friars, which hath certified me in case I come to England your counsel, would never consent to the marriage between the said lord and me, with many others saying concerning the same promise, so that I verily thought that the said friars would never have offered to have made me like overture, unless they might have had charge from some of your counsel, to which put me in such concentration, fear and doubt of the obtaining of things which I desired most in the world, that I'd rather chose to put me in your mercy, accomplishing the marriage, than to put me in the order of your counsel, knowing them to be otherwise minded. Whereupon, sir, I put my Lord of Suffolk in choice whether he would accomplish the marriage within four days, or else that he should never have enjoyed me, whereby I know well that I constrained him to break such promises as he made your grace, as well as for fear of losing of me, as also that ascertained him, that by their consent I would never come into England. And now that our grace knoweth the both offences, of which I have been the only occasion, I most humbly, and as your most sorrowful sister, require you to have compassion upon both of us, and to pardon our offences, and that it will please your grace to write to me and to the Lord Suffolk some comfortable words, for it should be greatest comfort to us both, by your loving and most humble sister, Mary. Now it's believed that the letter was sent from Calais, as Mary and Charles made their way back to England. She spoke about how she, not Charles, had the idea, and that she set her mind to it, and so she did it, marrying Charles, that is. Mary and Charles married on the 3rd of March, 1515, at the Hotel de Cluny in Paris, with ten people present, one being King Francis I. Technically, this was treason. Charles had married a royal princess without the king's consent. When Henry VIII sent his friend to France to escort Mary back, he made Charles promise that he would not marry his sister, also mentioned in the above letter. And Henry knew how much Mary liked Charles, and must have recalled the promise he had made his sister. 
Henry was undoubtedly outraged and it's even believed that his Privy Council urged that he have Charles imprisoned or executed, with Mary being the King's sister, safe from that herself. Mary then sends her brother another letter, which states the following. My dear and entirely beloved brother, in most humble manner, I recommend me to your grace. Dearest brother, I doubt not but that you having your good remembrance that whereas for the good of peace and for the futurance of your affairs you moved me to marry with my lord and late husband, King Louis of France, whose soul God pardon. Though I understand that he was very aged and sickly, yet for advancement of the said peace and for the furtherance of your cause, I was contented to conform myself to your said motion, so that if I should fortune to survive the said late king, I might have affixed and clearly determined myself to marry with him, and the same assure you hath proceeded only of mind my own, without any request or labour of my said Lord Suffolk or any other person. And to be plain with your grace, I have so bound myself unto him that for no cause earthly I will or may vary or change from the same. Wherefore, my good and most kind brother, I now beseech your grace to take this matter in good part, and give unto me and to my said Lord of Suffolk your good will herein, ascertaining you that upon the trust and comfort which I have, for fact you have always honourably regarded your promise, I am now come out of the realm of France, and have put myself within your jurisdiction in this town of Calais, where I intend to remain till such time as I have an answer from you, of your good and loving mind herein, which I would not have done but upon the faithful trust that I have in your said promise. Humbly beseeching your grace for the great and tender love which hath ever been and shall be between you and me, to bear your gracious mind and show yourself to be agreeable thereunto, and to certify me by your most loving letters of the same till which time I will make mine abode here and no farith enter your realm and to the intent it may please you the rather to condescend to this most heartily desire, I am contended and expressly promise and bid me to you. By these presents, to give you all the whole date which delivered with me, and also of such plate of gold and jewels as I shall have of my said late husband's, over and beside this I shall, rather than fail, give you as much yearly part of my dower, to greater sum as shall stand with your will and pleasure, and all of the premises I promise upon knowledge of your good mind to make up to you sufficient bonds, trusting verily, that in fulfilling of your said promise to me made, you will show your brotherly love, affection, and good mind to me in this behalf, which to hear of I abide with most desire, and not to be miscontented with my said Lord of Suffolk, whom of mine inward good mind and affection to him I have in manner enforced to be agreeable to the same, without any request by him made, as knoweth our Lord, whom I beseech to have your grace in his merciful governance. Mary in this letter speaks of how she trusted her brother's promise to be true, and how she still believes that he will do good on his word and bless the marriage between Mary and Charles, appearing to his brotherly love for her. Now, interestingly, there is one more letter that was sent to Henry, but this one was sent by Charles Brandom himself. He states, most gracious sovereign lord, so it is that I am informed devise many ways that all your whole council, my lord of York excepted, with many other, are clearly determined to type for your grace that I may either be put to death or put in prison, and so to be destroyed. Alas, sir, I may say that I have a hard fortune, seeing that there was never none of them in trouble, but I was glad to help them to buy power, and that your grace knows best. And now that I am in this none little trouble and sorrow, now they are all ready to help to destroy me. But, sir, I can no more but God forgive them whatsoever come to me, for I am determined. For, sir, your grace is that he is my sovereign lord and master, and he hath brought me up of naught. And I am your subject and servant, and he that hath offended your grace in breaking my promise that I made your grace touching the queen your sister, for the which I, the most humble heart, will yield myself into your grace's hands to do with my poor body your gracious pleasure, not fearing the malice of them. For I know your grace of such nature that it cannot lie in the powers to cause you to destroy me for the malice. But what punishment I shall have shank thank God, 
a new grace of it, and think that I have well deserved it both to God and your grace. As knows our Lord, who sends your grace, your most honourable heart's desire with long life, and me, most sorrowful wretch, your gracious favour, what sorrow soever I endure therefore. At Montreal, the 22nd day of April, by your most humble subject and servant, Charles Suffolk. Now I believe the reason Henry VIII was so upset with his sister remarrying without his consent was for one simple reason. He wanted to use her as a pawn to make another alliance that would be to his own advantage. The King's Council were also interestingly opposed to the match because they did not want to see Charles Brandon gain any more power at court. Now instead of Charles or Mary being reprimanded through imprisonment or execution, they were given a large fine of £24,000, which was to be paid to the King in yearly instalments of £1,000, as well as the whole of Mary's dowry from King Louis XII of £200,000, and the gold plate and jewels King Louis had given or promised her. The £24,000 approximately is equivalent to £7,200,000 today, and it was later reduced by the King. Mary and Charles then officially married at Greenwich Palace in the presence of King Henry VIII and his courtiers on the 13th of May 1515 and in 1528 Charles secured legitimacy of his marriage from Pope Clement VII. Mary was Charles Brandon's third wife and he had two daughters Anne and Mary by his second marriage to Anne Brown who had died in 1511. Mary raised the girls with her own children. Even after her second marriage, Mary was normally referred to as the English court as the Queen of France and was not known as the Duchess of Suffolk in her lifetime, despite being legally allowed to. Mary had to fight for what she had been promised, a marriage for love, and she held her brother accountable for the promise he made, whether he was king or not. Her life is remarkable, and her story doesn't end here. It's remarkable to think that Mary stood up to Henry VIII and essentially won. That in itself is a great achievement made by a remarkable lady. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.